Hey guys, what's up? So today we're going to be talking about design, which I think is one of the most important things in art, and that's the reason why I'm making it right after my Painting 101 video, because I think it's such an important topic that it's almost just slightly under being secondary to knowing how to put your brush onto canvas, Painting 101. Like, this design thing is very, very important because it illustrates kind of what humans are doing all the time in a lot of industries and in a lot of fields, uh, professions, whatever. When you're designing a car, when you're designing a comic book, when you're making a movie, whatever, you're kind of using these same sort of processes to make it better received by your audience. Now, when you're using these processes, they're not really conscious. And when you're dealing with psychology, there are certain things that we're just born to enjoy more. Now, I know that might be a controversial opinion, but it's just it's just true. Like think about when you're posting something on social media, you take maybe a hundred photos and you pick one over the other photo, right? And you'll show your friend and you'll be like, hey, which photo do you like better? And they'll generally kind of pick the same photos that you pick out of the bunch that are the better photos. Now what's really happening there? What's happening is that both you and your friend are speaking the sort of same language. Now you can't really understand it if somebody came in, hey, why do you like this photo better? Oh, well, it's just better. You know, it's, you just know it. It's almost like, uh, when you speak English and you know that certain words come after others in, in certain grammatical sentences, it's it's not really a, it's not really a logic, it's a feeling, right? It's like a gut instinct. And what's weird is that we're, art is a language, but it's not really a language we're all born to speak, but we do all understand it, right? And if you think about the way that that maybe horror movies portray a certain scene and make it interesting, is that they'll have a lot of silence, right? And then they'll use a lot of contrast, this big jump scare, and it'll frighten somebody and it'll grab their attention, right? And when you're doing that, you're actually narrating a story. You're saying what's important in that moment is that jump scare, right? You're, you're trying to illustrate the point of the movie, which is to scare the audience or to evoke some sort of emotion from the audience, right? And all of art and design is trying to evoke emotion. Like think about like shoe design, you know, you want to make it look cool. And when, when somebody says, oh, that looks cool, they're actually telling you that they were they were moved by it slightly. Now, it's not necessarily moved in it, moved by it in a, you know, you're about to cry or something, but but it's like, it's like, it's a subtle sort of emotional response, right? And what underlies all these emotional responses are kind of these common patterns that you'll start to see among the great artists, right? Now, among a lot of the best car designs, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, commonalities. Now, there's a lot of commonalities among the best director, directors, and the same goes for painters, right? So listen to this little clip by Frank Rosetta. I think it'll be very enlightening this enigma i had to tell stories at the same time somehow make it rich and beautiful and subtle somehow and yet eye-catching which is which is really an enigma but i kind of feel i did it in in the sense that i, I created images that were so powerful that they caught the eye for for different reasons rather than saying being very oversized large distorted brilliant color this kind of thing which i consider real gimmicks and I did it with low-key color, but uh, created uh, shapes that were somehow eye-catching, even at a great distance, no matter what the color was. It's like music, you know? You don't know why one thing, one note works well, backed by another note and so on down the line. Why it's, who knows? It's taste, it's something almost indescribable. And it's not that very different with art. So obviously you can see there that a lot of artists are kind of thinking about this. There's these weird unconscious things that we find really interesting that we can't really understand. Now, uh, when you go into it, it's probably, if I were to guess, it's this evolutionary kind of response to things that are more practical to pay attention to. Like if you're out in the middle of a forest and you see a berry, then it's practical to see that it as the most vibrant color as an eye catching color, let's say it's red, right? Rather than green. It's, it makes sense that you'd evolve to see that color and be captured by that color because it's actually practical to see fruit so you can survive. Now you take that kind of abstraction, you can compound it on all of these sort of abstract principles of design that capture your attention. And you can really start to understand that what you're doing in art is that you're unconsciously communicating in a, in a, in a sort of a evocative way to communicate a larger idea or concept. And the better that you are at portraying that idea, not necessarily coming with the best idea, but the best way that you can portray the idea you become a better designer and that's how you become a better artist. So let me use some examples. Let me tell you some practical things on how you need to apply this. And let's start with this book, Figure Drawing for Artists by Steve Houston. Now this one I had on hand, but it's actually very practical and it shows a lot of the uh, inherent interesting things that are in painting and drawing and what you should learn. So even the cover here shows a lot of this stuff that I've been talking about. 
things don't really need to literally make sense when you're designing it because you're actually creating more of an essence of what's important here. So most of artist communication and painting communication, you're actually like telling the person what's there and what isn't and you're describing the form and all this other stuff. You omit certain details and then you keep in certain details. So think about the way that you actually describe a story to your spouse or your friend or whatever. You usually include certain things that are important and then you don't include other things that are unimportant, right? So if the if uh, I come home and I was supposed to buy bananas, let's say for the house, and uh, somebody says, hey, did you get the bananas? I'd say, no, I didn't get the bananas. Or I tell a story about why I didn't get the bananas, right? Let's say like, oh, I didn't get the bananas because I went to the store and there were none, right? Now, that speech, that actual sentence that I just said is a form of abstraction. You're including certain details and you're not including other details. I could go on this long-winded story about how I went to the bathroom for five minutes and then there's no toilet paper and then I, you know, looked around for the bananas and I couldn't find the section and whatever, but it'd be kind of irrelevant to the point, right? All they want to hear is, hey, yeah, did you get the bananas or not, right? And when you're speaking, when you're actually portraying speech, you're doing this already. You're designing. You're already a designer, right? So you already kind of understand how to portray things in a way that's effective, that's efficient, and that kind of gets your point across. Now, there's obviously a difference between getting your point across in this kind of logical dry way and evoking an emotional response that really gets somebody at their core, right? And what you notice is that if you grab all of these things that are emotionally evocative, that evoke emotion, you can compound them in multiple different ways, then you start getting at the heart and the essence of what powerful art is. And a large part of that is simplification, like I was just talking about. Things, Some things are important, some things aren't. Now, design is getting the essence of something, right? So let's look at this. The actual back shape here has a very interesting shape design. You have a super S curve there, and then you have a straight and something like that, right? Now I just exaggerated the shape even from his, which was probably already exaggerated. But if you take this shape that exists, right? And then you showed it to somebody. And then you showed him this shape, right? And then you ask them which shape looked better, they would always, almost always pick this one. Now, why is that? You're simplifying it, right? This is this right here. What is this saying to you? Oh, I went to the store and then I and then I talked to the checkout lady for 20 minutes before I went inside, and then it turns out that the power went off, and then I'm a little, right? Not important. I went to the store, there's no bananas, right? You're getting your point across, and you unconsciously appreciate that better. Think about the people who are the most boring in their speeches. It's always people who don't say things that are actually important to the point, right? What's the point? So you always want to be thinking about what's the point in design because that's what you're actually doing is you're subconsciously communicating to their subconscious about what's important what isn't and you're using all these sort of weird unconscious tells in visual art for for that so Princess in the colors is that what you mean no no i meant like life <laughs> back then like life. they came in a black horse with the yeah. brown Sherry, and then they walk in through a to uh, stone steps okay and then by the time everything was like not not saturated, right? Right. So by the time they get in the room, they wanted the painters use the colors that they had, the pigments, the only way because nobody's dressed like with this. Okay. So then they exploit the the power of color to to narrate the story of the worker and that he's burned and that and then the guy is like kind of sick and he's green. Like it's more like the narrative of it. So they exaggerate it so that the people will be like Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Just think about it in the sense of a figure, right? When you have a figure, you're trying to tell a story. So the story here is that this guy's sitting on this box and he's turning around, right? Now, you can make that really boring by just taking somebody and some dudes in not very interesting clothing and he's just like sitting there and, you know, the person isn't idealized. They're not necessarily like the most attractive they could be, let's say. Like they don't represent what they what it could be in its true essence. And they're just kind of sitting there. There's no, it's like no twist, like barely any twist and all this other stuff. And it's kind of boring, right? Or you can take, you can simplify it and then you can really amp up what's working, right? So for example, when you have like this figure, see this nice like turn here? See how you have this flat box, which is the hips. And then you have this nice turn, the whole body is turning, right? And then it gives this kind of dramatic twist to the to the body, right? And a big way that you actually communicate purpose is through contrast. Now, contrast is also a kind of design decision, right? So when you're changing things, you can make the contrast of the light to the darkness 
more amplified and it'll make the image look generally better, right? And what you're doing there is that you're taking what's important, which is usually you, when you're physically, when you're painting, you're actually physically describing the form of an object, right? And when you amplify the light, what you're doing is that you're making the form more obvious and more simple. So it's just like that banana store example, right? You're making something more descriptive by amping up the light because it's actually easier to see what's going on. You know, like where's the tricep? Where's the arm? Where's the insertion? Are they muscular? Are they, you know, do they have more fat or whatever? Like you're trying to actually describe what the person physically is. And once you can do that and you can uh, upplay the lighting, usually it makes it look better than something with flatter lighting because it's actually unconsciously communicating to you that something is, it's, it's unconsciously communicating to you in, in a clear way, if you really think about it. Like that's the reason why it looks better, right? And if you can just get rid of all the detail, all the detail, right? And I don't mean detail as in the detail that's actually important, all the detail that's excessive, right? Get rid of the stuff that doesn't really help. And then you can just simplify it down to the essence of something. It just looks that much more interesting, you know? Now, another way that you can think about this is um, if you have a figure, you can actually make the curves and the, the overall silhouette of the figure simpler. But if you have like a figure, you want to always make the, the silhouette of the figure very simple. So like you might go like that and then have the leg like that. And then, you know, you have the arm that goes up or whatever. And you can have maybe the other leg come down like that. But you see how this, there's this giant gestural line flowing through the figure, right? And it kind of makes the figure simpler. Because if you had like kind of broken it up and there's no flowing lines going through it, it breaks up the flow and then it's harder to understand what's really the point, right? So you can simplify things also through the silhouette of the form. So it's kind of always the same concept. Like in design, a lot of the time you're trying to simplify what is there and then you're trying to amplify what's working. That's really the essence of it, right? So you're simplifying what's there and then you're amplifying what's working. And you can do that through values, you can do that through edges, you can do that through colors, you know, it does not blending and doesn't matter, all this sort of stuff. Now, understanding how to do that takes years, but understanding that you can do that and you can actually change what you're looking at really, really helps, right? And understanding a bit of anatomy also helps because what you're doing there is that you're simplifying the anatomy in a way that shows understanding of the form because you're trying to describe the form. That's literally what you're describing, right? And then you can actually uh, describe it in a way that's that's uh, idealized, right? And it makes it more obvious because if you have like a certain bump, let's say on the arm and you know what that is, you can amplify what it looks like and then it's more obvious to the viewer what the actual anatomical form is and it'll look better, right? So you're always trying to subconsciously communicate that something is very important, that other things are not important. You're always trying to make your things simple. You're always trying to sort of idealize what you're looking at. And if you do all of this, it doesn't matter in, even in just, if it's not even in visual art, like you do it in music, you do it in you know, photography, whatever, it's gonna have a better emotional impact on your viewer because you're communicating to the side of them that they don't even consciously uh, are aware of, right? So like every night we go to sleep and we get given a story that just comes out of nowhere. And it communicates in this exact same way. It's this metaphorical kind of way that we don't really understand. It's describing things in a very bizarre way. Like if you actually logically try to explain it, it makes no sense. But a certain side of you does understand it, right? And dreams can be maybe unsettling or they can be revealing or that, you know, metaphorically, they have a lot of truth in them and all this other stuff. But the system that actually is reacting to art exists within every single aspect of our lives. And it's, it's like this co-companion that we're not even really aware of until we're aware of it. And then it's just so dead obvious and frightening that we never even realized it. It's very weird. Yeah, but anyway, guys, this is a really deep topic, I would say, and, and a hard one to explain, but once you get it, it's really going to improve your art. I hope you uh, learned a few things today. I'm probably going to make another design video. Let me know if you uh, would be interested in that uh, down in the comments below. Anything else that you're worried about or you're, you know, trying to understand or that confuses you, and I'd love to help you out with that. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys really enjoyed it, and go make something beautiful. See you later.